may I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. This was the opening line of our gospel passage from last week. What the lectionary did not include is that Jesus' desire to withdraw from his disciples and the crowds was a result of the death of John the Baptist, Jesus' friend and cousin. Jesus' instinct in the midst of pain and grief was to retreat alone to rest and to pray. Unfortunately for Jesus, his notoriety and popularity were on the rise, and crowds of thousands tracked Jesus down, disrupting his desire for solace. This is where our passage from last week takes center stage with the multiplication of five loaves and two fish, which led to the feeding of 5,000 men, of course. Women and children were not included in the final count. Can you imagine how exhausted Jesus must have been in the midst of his grief to have compassion on all the crowds, to heal the sick, and to feed well over 5,000 people? He was desperate for some time, alone upon hearing of the death of his friend, and then all of this. Jesus did what I tend to do when my introverted self needs privacy after a family gathering. He put his disciples in a boat and sent them to the other side of the sea, and he dismissed the crowds. I can almost see Jesus saying to the crowds, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here with the song Closing Time by Semisonic playing in the background. Jesus and his disciples are destined to head across the Sea of Galilee to the land of Gennesaret, where the word of Jesus and his miracles has already begun to spread. And Jesus will once again be followed by large crowds and will be asked to heal the sick, with many people simply scrambling to touch the hem of his cloak. Jesus' lifestyle as a revolutionary must have been exhausting. Between being challenged and persecuted by the religious authorities and the Roman Empire, who ultimately had him killed, to the mobs of believers who were desperate for a glimpse or a touch, to the committed but high-maintenance disciples who just never seemed to get it right. There are multiple times throughout scripture when Jesus makes a point to take time away, to pray on the mountain alone or with a few trusted disciples. We often talk about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus by doing as Jesus did, by walking in the footsteps of Jesus and by loving as Jesus did. It is also abundantly clear that to be a follower of Jesus Christ also means to be an advocate of rest, private prayer, and self-care. Tricia Hershey is a Chicago native currently living in Atlanta who is a teaching artist, a performing artist, a writer, and a theologian. And she is the founder of the Nap Ministry. The Nap Ministry is a community that explores naps and rest as a form of resistance and reparation through art, poetry, and of course, naps. Hershey developed her idea for the nap ministry out of her exhaustion of being a black woman in America and in her exploration and connection to her ancestors who were enslaved for generations in the deep south. She recognized that naps, rest, and self-care were actually punishable offenses for her ancestors who were enslaved, and to this day continues to be a privilege that often is out of reach for many black people and people of color. Therefore, Hershey considers rest as a form of resistance and names sleep deprivation as a racial and social justice issue. I think we can all agree that 2020 has been one of the most exhausting years we have collectively experienced. And we must acknowledge that has been more impactful for communities of color. The disparities in healthcare, quality employment, 
housing, education, and community resources has been amplified by the impacts of COVID-19 and the continued uprising of police violence and abuse and subsequent protests. As a nation, we are in a place of grieving, grieving the almost 160,000 deaths from COVID, the continual rising toll of those being killed by gun violence in our very own city of Chicago, the militarization and the abuse of political trust. We are also grieving personal losses, the loss of connections with our families and friends, the isolation of so many, the loss of graduations and marriages and proper celebration and grieving of the death of loved ones. Authors Denise Hopkins and Michael Koppel write, grief comes when people miss one another. Grief is an emotional recognition that something is missing. To acknowledge rather than dismiss this missing is a sacred act of reverencing absence. We can miss what has been, a person, a thing, a relationship, or a commitment that no longer exists. And we can also miss what has never been. Hershey of the Knapp Ministry says of Americans, we are grieving and we may not want to recognize it or hold space for it because of our socialization of keep going. This denial of the process of grieving creates more trauma and in the long run disrupts our healing. She continues on to say that grinding keeps us in a cycle of trauma. Rest can disrupt this cycle. This is exactly what Jesus was modeling for his followers and for us today when he demanded time for rest while in the midst of grieving the death of his friend and managing the demands of public ministry. We know that grieving is not a process that can be rushed to get to those happy thoughts and self-satisfaction that our culture promotes. As a nation, we do not like to dwell in defeat or pain. We take pride in our can-do attitude of overcoming adversity. Rest, naps, and self-care provide us an opportunity to lament, to grieve, and to make sense of the story that we are in the midst of. My friends, we are all in the need for some quality rest. It was Jesus' time away from his disciples and the crowd that allowed him to reconnect with himself and with God, as well as to recharge in order to walk on water and continue his ministry. If we are going to continue as fierce disciples of Jesus, fighting for justice and equality for all, truly striving to love our neighbors as ourselves, living against the cultures of consumerism and oppression, we need to rest. We cannot use rest as an excuse or a cop-out, but we can use rest as an opportunity to reconnect with ourselves, with God, and recharge, just as Jesus did. We rest because we are human. We rest because we deserve it. We rest because we are all beloved children of God. We rest because even Jesus needed to rest. I would like to close with a poem that Hershey recently shared with the Knapp Ministry community this past week. This poem, written by Ruth Foreman, speaks to a day of rest, a day of feeling comforted, feeling warmth and held by the beloved hand of God. So please, as you feel comfortable, close your eyes and let these words be a moment of rest for you on this day. A poem entitled, On This Day. This is a day without chairs, a day where all the rooms melt together and there is only corners, corners and humming, wishes and slight breeze brushing you like palms. This is a day of prayers, a day of painful breaking a day of peace beneath, 
a day of arms, of hands, eyes, and quiet windows. I wish you love from your mother backwards. I wish you deep tunnels without fear. I wish you children's laughter. I wish you cactus flowers. I wish you moonlight. I wish you real eyes. I wish you a hand across your back, soft like when you were a child. I wish you tears. I wish you clean. I wish you angels in conference around your bed holding you so there is no space for me to even touch you. Just watch. I wish your mother watching. I wish you Avalon dreams. I wish you peace. I wish you doves in your kitchen, moonlight in your bathroom, candles when your eyes are closed and dawn when they open. I wish you so many arms across your shoulders, so many lips kissing your ears that you smile from the inconvenience. I wish you all your baby's love attacking the center of your heart just so you know that they are there. I wish you banisters, railings, and arms around your waist. I wish you training wheels. I wish you strong shoes. I wish you water. Oh, I wish you water. Though your feet flowing like a stream, and I wish you hammocks, and melon on your eyes, strawberries in your mouth, and fingers on your hand, fingers in your hand all day, through this house, on this day with no rooms, only corners, and uncommon breeze. Amen. <laughs>